Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers alkene nomenclature part one. In this video, we'll introduce International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry naming rules for alkenes. We'll start with alkenes that don't display stereoisomerism, in other words, alkenes that can't exist as stereoisomers. Then we'll move on in another video to naming stereoisomer alkenes. The first thing you need to do is identify the root name or the parent name for the molecule. Find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains both C-C double bond carbons. Here's an example. The highlighted option for longest carbon chain here is correct because it contains both carbons of the C-C double bond. Here's an option that looks tempting because it finds a longer ultimate carbon chain, but it doesn't contain both carbons of the C-C double bond, so it's not correct. Don't name it this way. Once you've identified the longest carbon chain, use the alkane root name, but change the ending from ane to ene. In our correct longest carbon chain, there are six carbons, so the root name, if it were an alkane, would be hexane. You just need to remove the ane ending and replace it with ene, and you get hexene. So that's the root name, hexene. Moving on then, we have our alkene with longest carbon chain identified and its root name is hexene. The next thing you need to do is to number the chain and specify the C double bond C position. Number the chain from one end to give the lowest possible number to the CC double bond. In this case, we'll start from the top because it gives the CC double bond low numbers of one and two. Next, you need to specify the C double bond C position using either the new IUPAC rules, which are preferred, or the older IUPAC rules. Under either system, it's understood that the C double bond C spans two carbons, so you don't need to list both carbons. You wouldn't need to say one and two. You only list the first number. Under the new rules, the locator for the double bond is placed before the ene ending, and it would look like this, hex one ene, where the one is sandwiched between the hex and the ene. Those are the new rules. Under the older rules, the number is placed out in front of the root name, which would be one hexene. Either one of these two naming systems is acceptable. They both get used pretty frequently, and you'll see them both used somewhat interchangeably. The next step then is to name and number the other groups that might be on that chain. In this case, we have a group attached to the number two position. This is a two propyl group. At this point then, the naming is just like it is for alkanes, where you place groups alphabetically out in front of the root name. In this case, the new rules would produce the result two propyl hex one ene, and under the older rules, it would be two propyl one hexene. Molecules that have two CC double bonds are named as dienes. Here's an example of a molecule with two CC double bonds. With this kind of molecule, the main chain has to be identified and must fully contain both CC double bonds. In this case, the appropriate longest carbon chain would be identified as shown here with the highlighted atoms. Use the alkane root name, but drop the NE ending and replace it with the suffix diene. In this case, we have a molecule that contains two CC double bonds that has seven carbons total in its longest chain. If it were an alkane, it'd be named heptane. We drop the NE ending and replace it with diene, and we end up with heptadiene. That's the root name for this molecule. The next step would be to number the chain from one end to give the lowest possible number to the first CC double bond along the chain. Never mind what else is happening with substituents. The first priority here is to give the lowest possible number to the first double bond, which would be numbering from the left side in this case. And that would give us numbers of one for the first double bond and five for the second double bond. At this point then, the rules for naming are the same. Under the new set of rules, this molecule would be named as having a methyl group in the sixth position and then it's two alkenes in the one and five position. So the name for this molecule would be 6 methyl hepta one 5 diene Again, the locators for the double bonds come before the suffix in the new rule system. Under the old rules, it would be 6 methyl one 5 hepta diene where it's simply the location of the one and five that's different. The locators for the double bonds are just moved out in front of the hepta instead of just before the diene part. The two names are very similar. Naming cyclic alkenes is described on this slide. Here's an example. This molecule contains a ring and the ring has some groups attached, but the ring is the major piece. It has the most carbon, so that's going to define the root name. In molecules like this, you define the root name as a cycloalkane, but you change the ane ending to ene. 
Here's how that works. If this were an alkane, it would be a cyclohexane parent name. We remove the ane ending and replace it with ene, and we get cyclohexene. The CC double bond is assumed to span the number one and number two positions in a cycloalkene, and there's no need to number it. So you wouldn't specify this alkene as being in the number one position, for example. It's just understood that it's there. We need to, though, assign which carbon gets the number one and number two positions. The alkene has two potential spots. We could either give the number one position to that carbon or that carbon, and then the other carbon of the alkene would be the number two position. The rules are that you should assign the number one position to give the lowest possible number to the first group other than the double bond. And remember, the CC double bond must span the number one and number two positions. So in this case, that carbon would get the one position because the first group the methyl group then would get a number one. Therefore, the top carbon of the alkene would get a number one and the bottom carbon would get a number two. And all of the other numbers for the ring would follow suit like this. Then at this point, all the other rules for alkane naming are followed and the molecule's name under both the new rules and old rules gives the same result and that's 1,6,6-trimethyl cyclohexene. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.